Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is a video to compare the Logitech G915 TKL, a light speed wireless gaming keyboard from Logitech and a premium device with a really nice look and feel to it, to the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition, another fantastic 10 keyless keyboard from Razer that's a really good design and another premium device. Both of these keyboards will set you back a fair amount of money. The Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition coming in at around £100. The Logitech G915 TKL is around £200 or $200, so a lot more money, but that is a wireless device and they're both interesting and worth covering. And I have unboxed both these keyboards and I'll link to those videos in the description so you can see close-ups of that and a bit more in depth on each. I wanted to talk to you about the differences between the two, what they like to use and the feature set that make them interesting. The Logitech G915 TKL is a fantastic bit of kit a really comfortable brilliant looking keyboard that has a brushed aluminium chassis to it a number of really cool features that includes light speed wireless connectivity bluetooth connectivity and wired connectivity it comes with this light speed wireless dongle that plugs into your pc also has a storage housing on the rear of the keyboard where you can put that dongle when not in use when you're charging the keyboard for example so you don't use it it also has this adapter extender so that you can plug in the micro usb cable to that and then plug your dongle into that so that you can set it up the way you want it and have easy access to that dongle on your desk as well. As I said, this is a micro USB connection, so it comes with a micro USB cable, braided cable, quite a nice cable, but why it's micro USB is because Logitech say that is a cost saving measure to keep costs down. Razer, meanwhile, supplies a USB-C cable, a very nice braided premium cable with a nice USB-C connection and that comes with that fantastic razor green hue to it, a nice bit of kit. Obviously this is a plug and play affair but it's also disconnectable so you can unplug it when you want to. It is a wired keyboard though, it's not a wireless one like the G915 TKL, it's worth bearing that in mind. There are some differences between these two keyboards but I thought they're still worth comparing because they're fantastic in their own little ways. Also with the detachable USB-C cable, that means you can potentially swap out for an aftermarket one. As you can see, the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition sits quite high on the desk. It has sloped double shot PBT keycaps that have a really nice texture to them and I'll show you a bit close up shot of those a bit later on. The G915 TKL meanwhile is an incredibly low profile design. It has key switches that are half the height of traditional mechanical gaming keyboards as well as very low profile keycaps and a very thin design so it sits really flush to the desk and it's actually very comfortable to use. It's worth noting that neither of these keyboards come with wrist rest which is a bit of a frustration but they have got their own ergonomics. You can see that the Logitech G915 TKL, for example, has a little feet at the rear with both a four and eight degree variant on them. So you can tilt it up the way you want it, or you can just have it flush. And I must say actually having it sit flat on the desk has been fairly comfortable for me. The Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition has quite a fat body by comparison, but you'll notice a slight slope both to the design of the body and of the keycaps as well. And that actually is a very comfortable experience to use as well. Again, I would say I would really like a wrist rest with this, that's a gripe with both of these keyboards, but that's a personal preference. This T-Board 2 has the feet to adjust on the rear with 6 degrees and 9 degrees as the options on it. But I actually found, again, that having it sitting flat on the desk without these up was fine. Especially with the slope that you already have to the keyboard, you can see here during a gaming session, made it very comfortable to use and it just sits nicely on that way. And it slopes on the keyboard and on the keys and it's just a really nice bit of ergonomic to it too. They are double shot keycaps as I said and this keyboard comes with Razer lineal optical switches. These are meant to be incredibly fast. They have a one millimeter actuation distance and require just 40 grams of force to actuate so they actuate really quickly and at 
incredibly fast and very responsive keystrokes. I noted that in the review video and check that out if you want to see that in more depth. As I said, there are also PBT double shot keycaps, very thick, textured, resilient, resistant and durable keycaps that are meant to last and last. And you can see the printed quality of them there and you'll note the texture to them. The G915 TKL by comparison has these very thin keycaps uh, they're designed to actuate 25% faster than your average key switches, and standard key switches, and they have a slightly different setup. You can get three different variants, GL Tactile, GL Linear, and GL Clicky, and those give different responses depending on what you want. But it has 1.5 mil of actuation and around 50 grams of actuation force, so it's still fast and satisfying to use. You can see a close-up of the key switches here from Kale, and they are very nice indeed. Other highlights to the G915 TKL are the media controls. You have a volume wheel on the top right, easy access volume wheel, as well as media playback buttons as well. Really like this little feature and it's nice to see it on a TKL keyboard. Razer's media control buttons are built into the function keys. So you see you still got to play back the ability to adjust the volume levels and the keyboard brightness as well too. The G915 TKL is capable of connecting via the wired cable, via wireless, via the dongle and Bluetooth too. So you have a multitude of connection options, obviously making it the superior one. You can adjust the brightness here in multiple levels with a simple press. And you can also go into Logitech's G-Hub software and play around with the lighting on it. I do think that the lighting on the G915 is probably superior to that on the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. I found it to be brighter and more satisfying to use. Both are per key illumination, so you can tweak them within the software. Well, we'll show you a bit more depth about that. And I'm gonna go into a bit more depth on this when I do a full review on the G915 TKLs and have more time with it. But you can see the different sort of styles and funky schemes that you can get going on with the software and the various setups of it. And it's very nice in that way. And the brightness levels are easily adjustable. It is worth noting, as you can see here, that with the brightness turned off, the lettering on the keycaps is nearly invisible. And that is one gripe I do have with this keyboard that even during the day it's very difficult to see those keys so if you aren't a touch typist and you don't know where the keys are you might struggle with that and one of the highlights of this keyboard that is is that it's designed to maximize battery life so with the RGB lighting turned on you can get 40 hours of battery life according to Logitech with it turned off you can get over a thousand hours they claim 1,124 hours or the equivalent of 135 days assuming that you gain for eight hours with the battery life turned off. However, you will need to take into account the fact that you will have trouble seeing the keys. Still 40 hours is a long time even with the RGB lighting turned on, so that's going to be a minor gripe. Now you can see the Razer Huntsman Tournament Edition. The lighting here isn't too bad. It does look very nice. You've got a nice bit of bleed from underneath and through the keycaps. However, the gripe that I had was the PBT double shot keycaps meant that some of the lettering was quite dull and quite dark. You can see that round the E key here and on some of the caps lock lettering and I just noticed it generally speaking throughout the keyboard. However, that's a minor complaint about a keyboard that otherwise looks fantastic and is really nice to use. You can see it again on the top left on the escape key there. Minor little problems. I will say that neither of these is RGB centric particularly. The G915 TKL perhaps has a slight advantage in terms of customization and just the way it shines. However, if you're looking for fantastic RGB lighting, I'd still say the SteelSeries Apex Pro is probably my favorite in terms of the RGB lighting on that, or the Rocket Vulcan 122. However, they're both fantastic keyboards to use, both very satisfying to type on, both really accurate for gaming. I'll leave all the information you need on the specifications on both in the description as well as links to the relevant pages so you can see them for yourself and places to purchase. But I'll say if you're looking for a high quality premium TKL keyboard then consider both these options because they're both fantastic. I really like the easy access keys 
and the fact that although it's a compact design they haven't cut down on the mass of potential buttons and customization options on these ones. Hope you found this video useful, let me know in the comments if you have any questions, thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn, hope you found this video useful, interesting or hilarious. Be sure to subscribe and check out these other videos as well as taking a look in the description for the links and information you might find useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see extra about this and have a great life.